Hey guys, what's going on? We're the Foundry and we're back at it with another Curse Podcast. That's Johnny. This is Tony. I'm Kylo. And today we got a brand new topic to bring to you. Tony, what's our topic? Today we're, uh, I picked a topic for this two months ago. <laughs> and it's the Amityville. Damn Corona. It's the Amityville massacres Ooh, and insane. hauntings. You know, the Amityville house pretty much. Yeah, so uh, I was very against this actually. I was very against this. I was not excited for it. I told you, like, I, for a lot of personal reasons, I don't want to do this. And so, what did he do? He said, for that, I think I'm going to choose it, you know? Yeah, because John lives in the Amityville house. No. I About the, did I not tell you why? He did, the sleep paralysis. Yeah, the sleep paralysis. Fake. Uh, like, incident with the fucking, with the main suspect of the Amityville the killings. Papa. Yeah, so, I've got that. This is this hits home deep, man. You know, you live in a big house, you know, with your family and stuff like that. Maybe that's what part hits me. Maybe that I've, I'm gonna go on a murder rampage. You know, Maybe, who the fuck knows? I don't know. They got skinwalkers outside, just like Robert DeFeo or what the fuck his name is Ron DeFeo. Um, wow. So who, Junior, who wants to start this? Who wants to start this case? You know, who wants to dive in? So. Outside is it raining? New York City, Long Island. Is it, it raining? It was very. There was a light perspiration in the air, but there was no rain. Was there like thunder? Like <laughs> it was like this on a night like this. Oh fuck! Is that it? <laughs> no. <laughs> Wasn't this nice house? <laughs> 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 no, 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 this is nice house. <laughs> outside of New York City in Long Island, or outside of New York City, Long Island, in the town of Amityville. On November 19th or November 13th, 1974, Ronald DeFeo Jr. shot and killed six of his family members. Wow, you dove right into it. I was gonna like, what is this? <laughs> right off the bat, boom, dead. <laughs> Everyone's dead. Which, well, that's it, guys. Yeah. Case closed. And they're dead still. So I mean, that, that's the that's a mystery. What case have we started where the, like six people are dead, and by the end of the case, six people are revived? I don't feel like he was like the, he's not the main part. He's the he's what got like the old house famous and shit just because he killed some people. Yeah, in the episode of MTV Cribs, TV Cribs, he also did before they convicted him. <laughs> Come on in, and then just the <laughs> dead family. Like, this is my daughter. Do you like the way I have her strung up? Oh, so, um, yeah, uh, Robert DeFeo Jr., known as uh, as an American mass murderer, uh, he tried to convict it for the 1974 killings. His father, his mother, two brothers, and two sisters killed his entire fucking family. Um, so what what happened was one night um, he went to each person's room and killed each family member while they were laying face down in bed. And which is there was a lot of there were a lot of like uh, I guess conspiracy and just like weird like little uh, I guess like things about this case like how each family member are found like face down in the bed you know and when you think of someone going around shooting people like it's gonna wake someone else up in the house you know someone's gonna think danger and run but like as if like each family member waited in the bed you know to be shot yeah like they're cool with it uh -huh. yeah I got a little bit on the uh, the Pharaoh matter and all that stuff cuz um apparently his grandfather owned a uh, supposedly his grandfather owned a uh, dealership I think it was a um, Chevy. Was it a okay a Chevy, a Chevy dealership? And uh, the son, um, Ron DeFeo. Yeah, Ron DeFeo Jr. Um, had it pretty easy there. Like his family knew that he was kind of a little bit messed up, and um, so they gave him like one of the easiest jobs. But still, like throughout his years in the company, he embezzled money. He did a whole bunch of dirty stuff. And his father kind of got suspicious working in the company, too. Yeah, so he's like the runt of the family, pretty much. And he's like, uh, well, this money's disappearing. We trusted you with this. What happened? And his son kind of made a sworn promise to tell him to be quiet or he was going to kill him. And uh, it led up to and the... And they killed uh, him. Yeah, it led up to the unfaithful <laughs> night where he killed uh, his father, his mother, his two brothers, and his two sisters in their bed with a thirty five caliber rifle. <laughs> And he killed them. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking rats. <laughs> Not under uh departed. Many different uh Not like Amityville. Many different suspicions. People believe and himself believe that he was under a uh, demonic presence and whatnot. Except alongside uh 
ghostly figure is telling him to do it to kill their family over and do over. Do it, bro. Do it, pussy. Do it. Do it. Do it. Yeah, do it. just do it. Oh, fuck. How did they actually fucking do it? All six of them? <laughs> Killed your family yet? Come on, man. <laughs> just waiting. <laughs> it's like him with like a little higher pitched voice with like little devil horns on him and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Until the uh, unfaithful day he actually did kill his family. The morning after he <laughs> tried to... He tried to continue his life as normal. Yeah, he to... went to a fucking bar. <laughs> I feel like that's like what your dad was He went doing. to Henry's <laughs> bar. That's personal. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just saying. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, so he went to a bar, but not for other reasons, you think. Oh, uh, uh, it was me. Uh, he went Do to you a think bar. There's he, other says, reasons? He, he goes to the bar. He's, he's, you know, just covered in blood or some shit, you know? Just, like, <laughs> I'm sure lots Let of gunpowder residue. <laughs> So supposedly he carried out his alibi, going back to the dealership, oh acting business as normal, and then the police started to come up and investigate him. No, you went to Henry's bar. It says, help me, I think. Uh, I never got that. I got that. Never got that. This is the official report. Police report, bitch. The report I got was he went back to the dealership trying to act business as usual, hanging out with his friend and all that. And um, After or before the bar? I never got the bar. I didn't know there was a bar involved. I didn't either. <laughs> you want to go ahead, John, if you got the bar? Um, yeah, uh, so, <clears throat> so, like, initially what happened, like, he, he, what I have the story is that he went to the bar, got for some help, he says, my mother and father are shot, um, so there was an emergency phone call, and they called the police, they searched the house, and found six members of the same family were dead in their beds, Ronald DeFeo Sr., 43, uh, Louise DeFeo, 42, Don, 18, Allison, 13, Mark, 12, John Matthew, age 9 or 8, I can't read my handwriting, because it's those are five years old. <laughs> this is really five years old. Yeah. Did you do that oldest. for school? Fuck, dude. What? Did you do that for school? No. When I when we were fish first gonna do the podcast, Kyle and, uh, Kyle <coughs> and I have been planning the first podcast for a long ass time. Yeah. Damn. Mm -hmm. But the uh, accounts I got was that he uh, supposedly went back to work. He was hanging out with his friend for a little bit, and supposedly he kind of spilled the beans with his friend. And it just all went downhill from there. He kept trying to claim to something just to not end up in prison. The insanity plea, the spirits were haunting me plea, the demonic plea, just all of it. Yeah, there were there like he eventually like he definitely confessed to it and stuff. So, mm -hmm. so um, <clears throat> evidence suggests that Louise uh, and her daughter Allison are both awake at this time of their death. So that kind of sucks knowing that your family, people around you are dead as fuck. Yeah, waking up to a thirty-five <clears throat> caliber gun. To Why your face? didn't they get out of the bed? That's what is a little fishy to me. Like, they're, I'm assuming there's no evidence of them being bound or something like that, you know? Well, I'm sure the second they noticed what was going on, the gun was already pointed at them. They're like, well, fuck. That's six people, though. Mm -hmm. Six bullets, motherfucker. Uh -huh. Four yeah. children, two adults. He took out the two adults first. Those I'm children don't know better, dude. At least I don't think. Uh, I did, just said they're ages. Did you know better if you were 13? Age 18, age yeah. 13, age 12, age 9. I think I think they would definitely know the 12, something. 13, 18 year yeah, the thirteen-year-old like, was fuck? awake when it happened. I wasn't able to get ages. I was. Just and told Louise that were it was... yeah, like Louise was like awake, as well. You know. Daughter. <clears throat> no, that's the uh, wife. Okay. So I'm saying like it's definitely weird how, like, so I don't think it's cut and dry as it's supposed to be seen. You know, like something definitely is weird, and that they were face down in their beds as well. Like that's very weird. Um, yeah, so the victims were all found lying on their stomachs in bed. Uh, police searched the house, uh, and then Ron DeFeo was taken to the police station for his own protection. After this suggestion of the police officers at the scene of the crime, that the killings had been carried out by a mob hitman, like, who he named. He named an actual person at first. Um, then they eventually did, like, another, like, uh, interview with him, and there was just, like, there's, there's loads of stories he's told, like, different, like, with different consistencies and just inaccuracies, so it's, like, you cannot trust this dude at all um and the following day he confessed to carrying out the killings himself an alleged hitman had a alibi as well um he was out of state at the time with the killings and told the detectives once i started i couldn't just stop he like, went so fast he admitted he had taken a bath and redressed and he was like no i was out of town killing someone else <laughs> <laughs> the kennedy fella that was me um yeah so he then he i guess like went down like he 
told the story of him like discarding evidence and bloodstained clothes and the uh, rifle he talked about and the cartridges and um, before arriving to work as usual, Travis said. Yeah. And then there was trial convention, uh, conviction, excuse me. It's and, a paper. Yeah, all six counts of second degree murder. Mm -hmm. So that's interesting. Um, but he actually got out of jail in uh, 2003. No, really? No, I'm just kidding. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. Wow. John's like, damn, where did I get that? Yeah, so um, that's not where the story ends. No. No. So the house completely vacant while Ron's rotten in jail for killing his entire family. No? Yeah. Not really. What do you mean? It wasn't no, that long. It, it was vacant. No one was living there. Well, I mean, like, he's not rotting, literally. I'm saying he's he's at jail. The he, house, there's no one living in the house. It's, it's for a point. month for him being in jail. Yes, and then... The so, Don, you're about to talk about George and Kathy Booth, right? Yes. Okay. Please Goddamn continue. right. Please continue. Stop banging on the table. <laughs> During the... Yeah, so... Um, in December 1975. No. Summer. Uh, no, December. Summer, bitch. I got October 31st, 2002. <laughs> what the... <laughs> <laughs> the Lutz family were now living in 2000. This is 1975, dude. All right, so in December 1975. <laughs> at least you got 75, right? We got the same year, at least. So at some point in fucking time, in 1975, George and Kathy Lutz and their three children leave the house. At, oh, wait, no. Wait. <laughs> so they purchased the house for 80000 December 19th. <clears throat> 1975, with the DeFeo furniture included, for an extra $400, which I don't know about you, but I would not want the furniture. Let's see. I have the Lutz family website. Oh, so, 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 so they might have purchased it in the summer and then just. No, no, I said that, that they went to go look at it for the first time. In okay. The summer, so I, I was getting to it. You were just yeah. like steamrolling over me. <laughs> and so then, uh. Yeah, they got the furniture as well for an extra 400 bucks. So what a steal, you know? Killer oh, yeah. sales. So what was the overall cost for the house and everything, guys? That's 80 grand plus $400 so for the furniture. Probably 80, 000, around $90,000 yeah. if you add all that up. Yes, a little bit of tax. <laughs> a little bit of tax. You know, a little tax money. So then, uh, uh, so a friend of George informed him about the history so of the like, house. So like, hey man, this place yeah. has got a grim reputation. Six people were murdered. Also, Ron did drugs. You know how bad we found him Ron drugs around here. He's like, really? he's like, see if you can look at the walls and find something for me. <laughs> I thought that the uh, father of the family, he knew that he was going to buy the house and it alerted the mother and all that, but they considered it to be their dream house and they didn't care either yeah. way. Yeah, and a, and a friend of George. Well, if they didn't care, then why they get a blessed by and, Catholic priest? Yeah, and a, friend, that and a friend of George. The Catholic school. priest. And a friend of George insisted that he got a blessing. So then, but you George. Mean, uh, Father Ray Picaro? No, his friend. So, <laughs> so George, and his name's Ralph, actually. What uh, did you say his name is, Carter? Father Ray Picaro. I thought he Ralph J. Picarero. It's Picarero. Ray, Ray, Ray is, uh. Father Ray. Ray yeah. is his, his, like, code name because he didn't want his identity associated with the house and so uh but also george is a non-practicing Meth methodist so he yeah, had no he experience so with any like of this really and like then kathy was a non-practicing yeah. catholic so she knew what the process took to get the house cleansed and blessed <clears throat> and so uh yeah, he, hired, blessed. he hired ray slash his real name is ralph j pecoraro or whatever mm -hmm. and uh he was a lawyer <laughs> and a judge of the catholic court and he's also a psychotherapist and, okay. and so then, uh, December 18th, the, well, that doesn't make much fucking sense. How did he, oh, so he must've came in before they moved in. So before they move in, they're like, Hey, he's like, I am going to go in. I'm going to do the blessing of your house, blah, blah, blah. And so then within the first holy water flick, I guess he heard a demonic voice, which demanded him to get out of the fucking house. And then he doesn't tell this to family for some reason. He's like, hey, I, that's probably my job, but fuck it. And so like, I like money. He had to think to himself, he's like, like, hmm, they probably brought me in because they're afraid of ghosts, all the spooky right. things. And he's like, oh, that's a bunch of What bullshit. I saw upstairs, was that spooky enough? Out of curiosity, Tony, was that He's like, I'd be cool with that living here. I don't know why they wouldn't be. As he's like out the door. Yeah, you're all good. No charge. I'm out. It's just like, it's a Casper scene that dude comes out the house with his head on backwards. He's like, you're going to need to call somebody else. <laughs> was that the only account with Father Ray you got? No, I got more. Okay. Okay, so, uh, so, uh, 
Okay, all right, here it is, yeah. So on the 24th, uh, you know, after they move in, he decides to call George and tell him to stay away from the second floor room where he heard the voice upstairs. He's Don't like, go hey. to this house. Like, yeah, he's like, he's that's like, where I'm sleeping like, right now, yeah, you idiot. Like, that's real, my bedroom. Real quick, the moment he inspected the house, do you have anything else? Yes. I'm, yeah. not, not after, like during the time yeah, he it said, the house. It said shortly after inspecting the house. Yeah, so we'll wait. So, but <laughs> real quick, that the room he inspected when he was inspecting it where he heard the voice was the former bedroom of Mark and John Defoe. Oh, shit, Defeo. Uh, Defeo. <laughs> Willem Defoe. The eight-year-old and the 13-year-old. Yeah. So uh, shortly after he left the house, he developed... Uh, high fever and blisters on his hands, mm -hmm. similar to stigmata, which if anyone who doesn't know what stigmata is, it's the uh, crucifixion wounds on Jesus. So he had blisters on his hands that were on his palms and his feet. Oh my god. That looked god. like the crucifixion wounds. Yeah. Did you also that, get the. That's uh, creepy. On his way out, the unseen hand that supposedly struck him? No, I didn't get that. What the fuck? Yeah, what happened there? Supposedly an unseen hand that just struck him. He never just... said anything about any of this <laughs> to the family. Never said anything about this. You look over, it's like Conor McGregor. <laughs> he's like, he's like, yeah, I got the shit beat out of me. The second room wasn't too chill. But other than that, you should be good, you know? Well, supposedly just it wasn't wear a, helmet. a slap. It was necessarily more of like a shove, like, you know. Oh, more like, bleh, <laughs> or something. Yeah. Yeah, apparently they were gonna use that as a sewing room. He says you'll uh, be fine, you know, as long as no one sleeps there. So your fucking family if yeah. you got them open. So it's strange. Accountancy is like, act, like, began immediately. Like cold spots were discovered in random spots throughout the house. Eerie vibes from, like, just were in the atmosphere. Jolting sounds uh, would wake the family during the night. Escalating chain of events took their, took the toll on the Lutz. You know, like not being able to sleep, just like constantly being scared all the time. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's crazy, you know. Um, <clears throat> uh, it's just not enough. So Kathy, um, she also began to undergo a series of unnerving events. You know, more than one occasion she described being touched by an unseen person. And most dramatically, um, Kathy claims that there were, uh, after waking from a deep sleep, her face was that of an old hag that took hours to, like, disappear from her vision. I guess at one night. <laughs> Did yeah. you fucking imagine? <laughs> Going to sleep, and there's Grandma Death and Donnie Darko. How long was I sleeping? <laughs> Out of curiosity, did you guys get the little event that involved Ed and Lorraine Warren? Uh, no. I think we're getting to that. The people go ahead. Yeah, I, go can, ahead. I can wait. But, um, yeah. I really, I, I love them. I'm sorry, go ahead, John. No, no, no. You, 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 you. This is. Okay. Um, Ed and Lorraine Warren. So, right? Ed and Lorraine Warren, several weeks after the Lutz family left the, uh, the paranormal, or left, the paranormal duo investigated the place and took a shocking photo showing a demon boy closely resembling that of John Matthew DeFeo, or De, DeFeo, age nine, 14 months after the house has been vacant and the family has been dead. Damn, we ain't moved out of that house yet. That's, that's what I got from him, uh, the rain one. Oh, so you're already like... Down just, the timeline? Yeah, that's... Oh, I mean, well, yeah, we're not there yet. We're still, like, kind of... We're still getting in the you haunting, go. I you bro. Go. That's why I told you to go. Yeah. Oh gosh. Gosh. Um, so... <laughs> John. <laughs> so, like, even the children were being affected by this. The ghosts were turning the children against each other. They began to argue more than usual, resulting in terrible, like, just actings and beatings from their parents and the youngest child. And Missy described speaking to an angel one night living in her room. Uh, this angel, Missy claims, was named Jody. Jody was able to present herself in a large... <laughs> this is hilarious. What? Oh, what? <laughs> Listen, Jody was able to present herself as a large pig. She, 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 a large what? I'm pig. Sorry. Pig. pig. <laughs> <laughs> is okay. the Amity Mill real? Not anymore. I don't believe this shit. I feel like it's all just a bunch of bacon. Fucking dumb. <laughs> Bacon's love this episode. To Missy and change shape form at will, uh, George and Kathy claim to have witnessed uh, two red eyes peering at them from the upstairs bedroom window. Missy believed it was Jody wanting to come inside. It's just a pig, mom. It's just, it's just babe outside, like just staring up at like. At the... Yes, making those noises exactly. Thank you, because I wouldn't. I don't have to look on the internet for pig noises, because I got you. You just look at me, pig. Yeah. Um, so we have many more personal experiences from the Lutz family. George says, I just 
didn't want to leave the house. We would invite people over instead of going to see them. There would come a point where we would invite people over to see whether we were crazy or not because when our friends sat in the kitchen, they could hear the people walking around upstairs, although no one would be there. Also, I have written here that uh, they all claimed to experience uh, living in a different house, that none of them had claimed to like experience the same things while living there. And that they all felt like they were living in different houses than one another. That's huh. so wild. That is weird. Yeah. But at first, everything was good. Yeah. So, like, like when they'd hear the footsteps, they'd go upstairs, and they find the kids, like, were already asleep, you know? And it's just a lot of weird things like that. And they would they would ask people, and they were like, you hear, you hear, like, the noises, too, and stuff. And they're just, like, it's not our imagination. These things are actually happening. So, um... And they just had to get out, you know. I think that's the best thing to do on a haunting like that is that you've got to flee your home. You gotta get out of there. But eventually left January fourteenth, nineteen seventy six. Um but they <clears> attempted <throat> to do one more blessing before they left. Yeah. So what, yeah. what happened with that blessing? It failed. And then they <laughs> and that after the blessing that was their final night in the house. Huh. And then uh after they left the family declined to give full accounts of events because they claimed it was too frightening. And then uh, they moved in with Kathy's mom. Mm -hmm. But also, they said that, uh, Kathy said that they moved in with her mother, the haunting still persisted to follow them. And that one night at her mother's, she saw greenish black slime coming from the staircase of her mother's house. Some goosebump stuff right there. And then they, and then they, so they, or no, they moved into another house after Kathy's mom. And then they saw the slime at that house. So they left that house, and they left everything there. They said, fuck it, we're just leaving. We don't need to live, actually. And we then, need to live in the car. And then the movers that went to move their stuff at that house reported paranormal activity. <laughs> they just, like, come with, like, unload, like, 40 boxes yeah. and open up. It's all slime yeah. in there. <laughs> what the fuck do they need this? What the fuck? <laughs> They're carrying, like, what a big-ass couch, but it's slime instead. What are they, some type of slime vomit? <laughs> goddamn 40 pounds of goddamn slime. What is this? What do you got? What are you packing? Slime? Oh, my goodness. Fucking Nickelodeon CEO yeah. lives here. I'm you so about to go to the fucking Nick Toys Awards? What the fuck is this? Uh, so, um, yeah, then the <laughs> Warrens showed up, Ed and Lorraine Warren, which are like huge paranormal investigators. I'd say the most popular, the most like infamous. They spawned that dumb doll movie. Exactly. Um, they just like when they first entered the house, they had an overwhelming sense of sadness and depression. Lorraine said like throughout the entire house because obviously like. Amityville went through a lot of shit, you know, six motherfucking people dying, but, um, um you did say, like, what, they saw, like, a child, right? Yeah, um, suppose, uh, there was actually a photo of that, have you seen the photo? I have not seen the photo, I forget who supposedly saw the child, it mm -hmm. was, um, it's a, they got a photo of it. I should open my phone. Why is that? Um, okay, so it was Ed and Lorraine, uh, Lorraine Warren that saw the child, obviously, duh. Um, but, uh, yeah, Same supposedly it was supposed to be John Matthew DeFeo, but, um... Mm -hmm. supposed to be the boy. Yeah, one thing I... Oh, hell no! I don't want to look at that shit! Yeah, yeah I've seen that. Yeah, um, yeah. one thing I thought was interesting was the father, uh, George Lutz? I that's the original, yeah, George Lutz. He was the father of the... Of the Fuck no, family. dude, that's creepy. Supposedly, he witnessed his children and his whole family levitating their dads in one night. Jesus Christ! Yeah, like, he, I don't know how he acted. I guess What they like, y'all doing? He goes into the... His daughter's <laughs> Pulls room, out belt. Like, oh, y'all getting a spanking now! Get down from there! <laughs> y'all getting <laughs> high in there? Fucking... I said no levitating on your beds, you <laughs> sons of bitches! <laughs> I told you to stop with that levitating. <laughs> You motherfuckers. Now you're gonna get the hose again, bitch. The kid, I don't know how the kids would miraculously wake up with markings on their body. <laughs> Shaped but, like um, my belt. To wrap it up real quick, I got a, uh, some believe this story is made up due to the legal issues of the family, financial wise. And, Which uh, one, the first one or the second one? The, uh. The Lutzes or the DeFeos? The DeFeos. They had financial issues? Yeah, supposedly. Yeah, because Ron was embezzling on the money. Oh, from the family business. And uh, yeah. their son, Daniel, oh, moved on to be a stonemason, stating that... George? Yeah, uh, no. Uh, Daniel. Daniel. Daniel who? Or, uh, Robert's yeah. brother, or Ronald's brother. It's Ronald's dad's son. Um, but, yeah, he, uh... There isn't a Daniel in the family. Ronald's brother, Daniel. Oh, Ronald Sr. Yeah. Okay, because the son's name is also Ron. Yeah. He uh, stated that um, 
He moved on, lived his life as a stonemason, but claimed that that house ruined his life. Well, and yeah. that is what I have. Yeah. So I guess like there, that's the only evidence we have is like we'll we'll show we'll put, obviously put the photo on the screen of the little boy, but like that's the photo that was taken by the Warrens and whatnot. I um, like that shit. And a lot of extensive research done by the Warrens, of course. You know, some um, people often don't like the truth. Or fucking creepy ass pictures, of little demon boys. I mean, like the one I show you, like obviously, like it's added, like that's that's edited, you know. Like, you show me the original one too, though, and I don't fucking. That looks like he's there. He's there. What else could that be? That's a boy. That's a little child. You see it, Kyler? I've seen that. Dude. That that's. I don't like that. That's a little kid. Just take a good look at. Get that shit out of here. Just look at it for like thirty seconds. It's no. Ah! <laughs> Fuck. All right. Why wouldn't we just put the picture behind us? Um, because I don't want to edit that in. But, um, boys, is there anything else? No, I think um, we need to come down. Yep, it comes down to the point. What do we think? It's do we, are we, are we deciding whether Ron did it? Is he guilty? Or if the house is haunted afterwards? Well, if or we do think we it's think that haunted, the paranormal then Ron didn't do it. But if we don't think it's haunted, then Ron did do it. No, so are you saying, no, wait, so what you're saying is, you think that everything that, that this house is paranormal and everything that happened okay, was here, driven here, here, by the so, paranormal? <clears throat> Do I think that Ron did it? Um, or should we have three asking points? I think we should have three. I think yes, he did do it. Um, two, was I, think, I think there had to be some sort of possession because I have a personal experience um, with uh, some spooky shit happening. So I think something was happened. And do I think there was a paranormal activity after yes. the incident? Yes. So it's all three yes for me. Yes for me too. What are you trying? Can I get the three questions again? I'm sorry. So did Ron do it? Yes. Was there a paranormal force b behind him doing it? No. You think that he just did it on his own accord? Yes. Um, do you think there's paranormal activity you think after that spawns the spawns paranormal activity? No, because around the time, it's uh, like that time, it was the, uh, what year was it again? It was like the 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70 yeah. It's it's such a touchy year for mental illness and so much stuff. Well, like what about that? the picture? What about the Warrens? Mm -hmm. Yeah, what about the Lutz and all their first-hand accounts? What about the and, Warrens? And the friends What about the priests that? with the fucking Jesus things? Uh-huh. The stuff well, I'm I, I believe that, um, like, unless he did, you can't really uh, get the devil unless you call out to him. So he did it on his own. So that doesn't answer the last question. He did it on his own. There no. was no paranormal figures. There was no After the fact. Did he did that to him, though? After, after the the murder for the, the Lutzes killing. shit for the Lutzes I feel like they were building off the story just to make financial profit yes so we actually police? didn't touch on that at all no. yeah okay. but the Lutz family they actually like they, they wrote a book and shit book, yeah. they sold the rights to that which is the on. Ryan Reynolds movie yeah they sold the rights to that in 2002 and, <laughs> yeah so they made bank off that so there's a lot of speculation that they made it all up in order to make money off that which is a fucking great idea Kind of like Skinwalker Ranch, you know, because they sold that ranch for yeah. uh, like millions of dollars, right? Hey, it worked. So. It did work, just like this worked as well. So because, because it's real. real. This is really interesting, Kai. I think this is the first time that you've like suspended your belief and like disagreed with. Because he didn't pick the fucking topic. That's not true. Because it's been months, probably. He's been sitting on it. He's like, I've actually had time to think about this. It's not real. <laughs> so you look like you think it's real. You look spooked, Tyler. No. So what if? Is that it, guys? Did, I'm I don't think Tony gave his answer, too. Yeah, you agree yeah, with I, I agree with John. Agree. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, thank you guys so much for watching another first uh, podcast episode. Sorry that it took so long for us to put one out just due to COVID. We also got some upgrades. Hopefully, the green screen made a big difference. We got microphones. We got a new webcam. We told you your upgrades were coming. You guys stayed with us, showed the support. We really appreciate it. Tony, Kylo, thanks, guys. And we'll see you later on the next first podcast. Make sure to drop some suggestions down below in the comments. Bye, guys. Next episode, we got Giant Molesting Tree.